Coming to you live on Stadium from SB Ballard Stadium. They call it Foreman Field. We're also streaming live on Facebook with no commercial breaks. We told you that Lawrence Gardner is out, the leading tackler for Old Dominion. That's not the only injury news we have to bring you. And Kristen Balboni, the third member of our team, has more on that. Kristen. Yeah, guys, that's right. Jeremy Cox, Old Dominion's leading rusher, will be out for this game. He is dealing with an ankle injury. Head coach Bobby Wilder said they are going to be leaning on Keyshawn Strong to carry the load for them at running back. Now, he had a career night last week against FAU, three rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. So they are looking for him to get it going against a very good Marshall rush defense. We will also see Lala Davis and Will Knight, according to Coach Bobby Wilder. Guys. Okay, Kristen, thank you so much. And uh, Marshall also dealing with a, a running back issue as you take a look at Bobby Wilder, still in good spirits despite a 1-5 and five start. He knows his team is gaining confidence week in and week out. We had them last week at FAU, and you know they were right there within five points in the fourth quarter before FAU really turned on the Jets late in the game. That one win, a huge one, the biggest in school history against Virginia Tech. And he says it's already paying dividends in recruiting as well. I mentioned the running back situation for Marshall. They're again without Keon Davis, who didn't play last week either. So Tyler King, who had a career game at the running back position against Middle Tennessee, is going to get the start for Doc Holliday in his ninth season at Marshall. And we're set to go. A sun-splashed afternoon. And Marshall will get the opening kick from Old Dominion. Fans are fired up here. AJ walked all through campus this morning, checked out every tailgate. They're all over the place here. What a great atmosphere stadium right in the middle of campus. I tell you what, I really did, Chris. I wanted to get a feel for what it was like here at Old Dominion. And, and when I got here, like, there's tailgates all spread throughout campus. These people are absolutely energized. And I like the small, intimate feel at Foreman Field that we have going here. There, there may not be a whole lot of people, but the people that are here, they are absolutely engaged. And we are underway with a touchback. Marshall will start at the 25-yard line as Alex Thompson, the Aaron Rodgers lookalike, will take the field for, for Marshall. He said that after the game last week, a player from Middle Tennessee came up and, and said, hey, you look like Aaron Rodgers. They wanted him to look more like Aaron Rodgers in the pocket this week, too. Yeah, doesn't everybody, Chris? Yeah, I mean, you see, he, he's 6'5", 233 pounds. That's what you think of when you think of drop-back quarterback, a guy that can sit survey the field in the pocket but he's also athletic he can pull it down and run when he needs to and, and I like that as a change up you don't want that being uh, part of the staple of this offense you want his arm uh, what he relies on but let's see how much this ODU defense makes him shuffle around in the pocket well, Tyler King is to his left in the backfield as he takes the shotgun snap first play of the game and it's a completion out wide to the right Marcel Williams on the grab and and that's what they told us. Make that Tyree Brady, I beg your pardon, on the reception. They, they told us that they want to get him two quick, early completions to start this game. You hear that talked about all the time. No matter what, you could be in your 15th year in the NFL. As a quarterback, you still want to get into a rhythm, feel good about a couple short completions. That can go a long way. So expect another quick one here. Again, it's complete, and again, it's Brady. Uses that stiff arm and squirts his way near the 45 yard line. So far, so good for Marshall and Alex Thompson, who really improved as the game went on against Middle Tennessee. Yeah, he did. He, he didn't have a great game, but you could kind of see that he felt more and more comfortable his command of the huddle. I mean, he's not a young guy, he's just inexperienced here at Marshall, being his second start. He has all the physical tools. The question is, can he put it together here at this level? Takes the handoff, another quick toss, and another completion. This time it's Obi Obialo, the Oklahoma State transfer. And that's a good pickup on first down. Three for three to start this game for Alex Thompson, who was 17 of 34 last week for 173 yards, a couple touchdowns, and an interception. He also had a fumble in that game. They really value the ball at Marshall, and they don't want anybody turning the ball over. Brady on the screen pass able to make something out of nothing there broke the initial tackle and he's within a yard and a half of the first down so it's third and short our first third down of the game yeah number 31 Sean Carter playing outside backer today moving from the nickel position 
uh, because of all the injuries. He was coming on the blitz. He already had a screen set up in his vicinity, but he came back, retraced the steps, and made the tackle here to set up a big third and one. And the big boy in at the running back position, Anthony Anderson, 6'2", 240. They're going deep down the sideline for Brady, and it's a little too much. And now the decision on fourth and short, the punt it in Old Dominion territory or try to go for it. Looks like the offensive linemen are coming out, and they will punt this football. What do you think of the call here from Doc Holliday? I mean, I, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't go for it. Let's see if, if, if there is a fake in play, if they get the numbers that they want. But it's kind of an interesting call on, on third and one to, to throw it deep. There's a little bit of hand fighting between uh, Geronda Hall and the receiver, but I would have liked to see him give it to the big boy, Anthony Anderson, to try to get that first down. Robert Lefevre, the punter. And it's a low line drive. Harper going to let it bounce, and this is going to work out really well for Marshall. It'll roll dead at the eight yard line. And this Old Dominion offense certainly hasn't been the problem since they went with Blake LaRussa as the main quarterback. He has been lighting it up. This is a guy who does have weapons in Jonathan Duhart and Travis Fulgham, but you got to have a quarterback to get it to those weapons, and he's done a fantastic job, AJ. Yes, he has, and the best thing about him is his accuracy. He, he can throw the deep ball. Everyone, I think, saw that in his coming out party against Virginia Tech, but he's very, very accurate. And I, I just, I mean, last week he completed 76% of his passes, and this isn't the uh, the new style spread them out horizontal offense where every completion is two or three yards. They like to push the ball down the field. Another pass to open this game. And that one's complete to Jonathan Duhart, who's fourth in the nation in receiving yards a game, averages 118 yards a game, five straight 100-yard receiving games for Duhart. You're going to hear that name a lot today, Duhart and Fulgham. Throwing it for the second time in as many plays, and it's complete at the sticks. Duhart has the first down for Old Dominion as they try to get it out from deep inside their own territory. They stop Marshall on a third and short, and now they've got a first down. Check out the route. Duhart here. If you see it, just a, a simple thing there, he ran the route about a yard and a half past the sticks so he can come back to the ball. Now, inexperienced receivers will run the, the route to the sticks, so when they come back to the ball, they're short of the first down. Duhart obviously a senior he knows what he's doing it gets beyond the sticks Duhart with his third reception of the game taken down by carry on Merrill and the ball is out Marshall has it at the 18 yard line he's fighting here for extra yards he's definitely not down Frankie Hernandez stands him up and just rips the ball out. Let's see if he's the one to end it. It looks like it squirted out from Hernandez. Uh, he ended up coming down with the two. What a play early on. And uh, carry on Merrill holding, holding him up. Frankie Hernandez comes up, gets the strip and the recovery. I'm sure Hernandez may be kicking himself a bit. He may have been able to uh, scoop and score on that ball. Chris, I think you may have scooped and got a few yards on it. <laughs> well, it was his first forced fumble of the season the senior from Largo Florida quoted as saying earlier this season I just go hard no limits no stop signs he just kept going at that football keeping Duhart up and that is a rare mistake from Jonathan Duhart and now Marshall has it in the red zone first and 10 18 yard line for Alex Thompson who looked good on his opening drive three of four yeah, a bit disappointing opening drive for Marshall. They started out, looked so good. Get some easy completions for Thompson, and then they, they stalled out and had to punt. Now they're, they're back in business here in the red zone driving. Running back is Tyler King. And that will deflect it and intercepted what a play. Oh, Shane Zimenez. That is why we highlighted him off the top. What a beast he is, number seven. Watch O'Shane, look at the read to where he knew it was going to be an underneath a little tear screen almost. Instead of rushing all the way up the field, he has the intelligence to sit down. Look on the left side of your screen, sits down, gets his hand up, 
and great things happen when you get your hand on the football. I mean, touchdown saving tackle from quarterback Alex Thompson there, but what a play. Just such a dynamic playmaker. He has been wreaking havoc on this Marshall team for many years now, and he continues his superb play. Second in the nation in sacks, but his first interception of the year, and it's out wide to Isaiah Harper, who has a couple. One more look. Watch him on the right side of your screen here, number seven. They're trying to set him up. They want him to rush up the field to get out of that throwing lane. He's smart enough. He sees that. He feels the tight end sitting down in his block. Says, absolutely not. I will sit right here and try to take this and get a pick six quick on you. Yeah, he doesn't play offense, too. That's uh, Travis Fulgham. Do have the, the double numerals in college football. Fulgham wears seven on offense, a great wide receiver, and Zimenez on defense and the first carry of the game for Keyshawn Strong who had 99 yards on the ground last week and four touchdowns both career highs. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed it out Chris we we show number seven run out and line up at receiver. I think a lot of people oh this guy even plays offense. Well, he, 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 proves he can catch. He definitely could. Two of your uh, two of your best players on your team both wearing number seven. It can get confusing for some people. It's third down and eight. LaRusa to throw again. And tried to force that in one to uh, Isaiah Harper. But good coverage by the Marshall defense. And the defense is holding strong after trading turnovers. Still no points in this game. Doc Holliday cannot be happy with the way his last offensive possession ended. But so far, so good for the defense. A uh, forced fumble and fumble recovery, and then a, a quick three and out. Yeah, these teams just trading punches defensively. Bailey Cates to punt it away. That was close. Great kick. Wow. Taken in at the 10-yard line. And still have Marshall backed up inside the 20. No score. We've only played four and a half minutes. No score here between Marshall and Old Dominion. There was a penalty called at the end of that punt return, and it went on Old Dominion. So Marshall's going to have some better field position than it thought at the 34-yard line. It was a personal foul on Old Dominion. So Marshall has it for its third possession of the game, and there's a handoff, the first handoff of the game and that's Tyler King and look out again the ball came out late but the officials are ruling it down and the fans here right in front of us are not happy about it I saw an older gentleman just slam his program into the bleachers it's been a wild game so far early on a lot of uh, good contact let's see his knee was most likely down there I think it looked like a good call and it's going to be third down and short after that short run Marshall wasn't going to wait around Anyway, they're getting that ball snapped. They're yeah, trying absolutely. to keep it moving. Third and one here. You think they they tried to uh, give it to the big boy Anthony Anderson? I see has checked back into this game instead of trying to put it in the air. Yeah, he was in there on the third and short on the opening drive. They didn't hand it off to him. It was an incomplete pass, and they punted. See what they do here as the crowd comes to life. He does get the handoff. He does get the first down. Anderson, the senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, is a D end in high school and you can see why with that body. Yeah he uh, he's a big boy obviously but he has some great vision if you saw he cut back across where uh, where the only spot that was open because ODU was stacking the A gaps with their inside backers on that play. Gets the carry again this time met right away by Daniel Apu. Take one more look at the third and short play. Third and short here you see in the middle of your screen 31 number three they're both stacking the, the A gap. So naturally, there'll be some room on the outside. The, the offensive line for Marshall did a good job caving it down, and he cuts right back off of those O-linemen and converts. That's one of the toughest things for quarterbacks, I know, when you talk to them. When you shade and you stand your two backers in that A-gap at the line of scrimmage, quarterbacks hate it because they don't, also does the offensive line, because they don't know who to identify. Or, well, they could, technically they could blitz, but they're probably not gonna blitz. What do we do here? Where do we slide the front? It just confuses quarterbacks. Thompson had some pressure from the blind side. That pass incomplete. Old Dominion.
got heat on the quarterback and then they were all over Tyree Brady the intended receiver. There is an injured monarch near midfield on the far side. Ahead of third and nine for Marshall. That's Justin Noy, senior from Rochester, New York. The key players on this defense, 30 plus tackles, limping a little bit, but coming off under his own power. Old Dominion still looking for its first conference win of the season. They had a couple early conference games. Before that Virginia Tech game, lost to FIU by eight, lost to Charlotte by three. Last week, lost at FAU, the defending champs. And the final score not indicative of that game for Bobby Wilder. They were within five, two different times in that second half. And he told us he was looking for a much better defensive effort in this game. So far, so good. Sending a blitz. Brady's got it. But a good open field tackle, and he will not have the first down Sean Carter on that stop. It's kind of a hybrid they can move him all around and I don't think you can really even give him a category of what position he's playing but being able to tackle in space is one of the toughest things to do. That's why a lot of these offenses in college will spread you out four and five wide. They want to put defenders in space and right there he shows you that uh, Sean Carter will not be fooled. He can break down and make a tackle. Good punt, but a bad bounce for Marshall. Works out well for Old Dominion. Isaiah Harper let it go, and they'll get to start at the 25-yard line halfway through this first quarter. Still no score. A little bit unexpected between the two teams that we expected to uh, light up the scoreboard today. Uh, see all that Kelly Green in the stands. As some fans from Marshall making the trip to watch this game at Old Dominion in Norfolk. Three and two. And the two losses, uh, a little tough to swallow. They were in that game against NC State, lost 37 to 20, and lost last week by 10 at home to Middle Tennessee on a Friday night. But the first quarter has been great for this Marshall team. Just nine points allowed. They haven't allowed anything so far to Old Dominion. But Marshall's the team that's had its opportunities in this first half we're going to get a false start that's uh, it's about as bad as it gets from the tight end start. Dante Anthony Number 84 in the offense five yard penalty still first down so first and 15 after the penalty they also had a, uh, a penalty on that uh, punt one series ago that gave Marshall better field position hasn't hurt him yet. Marshall's had it twice in Monarch territory, but they have not scored. And we haven't seen much of that. Running plays. Keyshawn Strong. His coach said he's clearly one of the better players on the field last week against FAU. That's saying a lot considering all the great offense we saw from both Old Dominion and FAU in that game. Yeah, four touchdowns last week. They don't want, they don't really want to run the ball too much for Old Dominion. They'll take it if it's there, but they want to put the ball in the air. They'll do it again here. Looking for Duhart. He's got it near midfield. Ball came out late. But they're going to give him the catch and say he was down. Chris Jackson thought that it was either incomplete or a fumble. You decide. The ruling on the field was a completed pass and a first down. The play is under review. So used to calling Duhart's name that I just spouted out anytime somebody catches the ball, but that's Travis Fulgham. They are very much alike. They look a lot alike. They just uh, both go over 100 yards many games. It's under review, so they're going to look to see. AJ, did you see anything from that angle? Let's see. He definitely had possession of the ball. He got two feet down. Right here, he's going to go up. He has possession. The ball's not, he's not bobbling one foot, two feet. Does he have to make a football move now, Chris? They change the rule every six hours, it seems like, on what's a catch and what's not. Looked to me like that ball was coming out before he hit the ground. Oh, and yeah. I don't think he has. But did he have possession? As he got hit there from Malik Gant, it almost looked, I don't know if they can. Say that he had complete possession. Yeah. 
I think he did have possession. That may be a fumble. I'm going to say they're going to call this incomplete. If they do call it a fumble, Marshall ended up with it. But did they blow it dead? That's the question. Many questions. Many. That our replay official, Randy Smith, has to go Sorry. over. And I'm not giving any answers here, that's for sure. Steve Lamontia is our head referee in this game. Well, Duhart's already fumbled in this game. And Travis Fulgham knows he should have come down with that one. So far, they've got it marked at the 47 of Marshall. So important to note the call on the field is a catch. Let's get the review call. After review, the play is confirmed. First down. How about that? We were both wrong. AJ says fumble. I say incomplete. So they say he caught it and he was down before the ball came out. I'm not sure how, but that is what they saw. That's the one thing I thought was not going to happen. Wow. You know, there's one thing I took off the table that, hey, they saw something that we didn't. Clearly. Will Knight, the running back, they play fake to him. LaRusa looking for a receiver to come open and unable to get it to Fulgham, who crashes into that Marshall sideline. Let's go back to that review. And this is a freeze frame. Now, the ball still in his hand there with the elbow on yeah, the ground, okay. but I thought the ball started coming out before that. It did look like it started to move before that, but since they called it a catch on the field, I'm sure there was not enough evidence there to overturn their, their original call. But his elbow was down, and they couldn't really tell if the ball had moved yet or not, so that's why they upheld that. Will Knight the carry, penalty marker down. The, this one will probably come back. Now, Old Dominion fans certainly aren't going to apologize for that because... They know that there was a call that went against them late in the East Carolina game that could have resulted in a win. Personal for foul, hands in the face, number four, the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. And this one goes the other way. Usually when a flag flies that early in that area, it's on the offense, but they get Jawan Young for hands to the face. And Old Dominion's in business now, benefiting from that review. And now a 15-yard penalty. They're all the way down at the... 27 yard line of Marshall. Old Dominion trying to be the first team to score a touchdown on the Marshall defense in the first quarter this year. Strong the handoff, tried that left side behind the tight end, Dante Anthony, but not much there. Watch the left side of the screen here, number four, Juwan Young. Yeah, right there, hands up to the face, threw the chin into the face mask there. Yeah, they'll call that all day. As he's getting washed down a bit, gets his hands up too high, and that's just so obvious, especially when you're on the end end of the line of scrimmage. They're going to see it, and they call that all day. Second long, five and a half to play here. First quarter, still no score. Ball just outside the 25-yard line. La Russa to throw. And that's the tight end, Keon White who wasn't supposed to be able to play in this first half. He was ejected in that FAU game in the second half for fighting. But the league looked at it and said, you know what? He shouldn't have been ejected, so he's eligible to play in the first half. I like that they have some, some recourse, that they can go back and say, hey, this is it's not justified. I, I need to appeal my case and fight for it. And I, I like the fact that the league let him start this game. Third and six after a pickup of a couple as the clock ticks under five minutes here in the first. Will Knight the running back. And he gets the handoff. Pushing his way inside the 20. And he may have the first down he will with second, third, and fourth efforts from the offensive line. And Jonathan Duhart even coming in at the wide receiver position to push the way down. You got to love this. This whole stadium just came alive. Look at him right there, you assume he's down. Oh no, the big boys are pushing. And then just kept building momentum, building momentum. Everyone gets involved on that. That thing has a trickle down effect, I promise you. You can hear the crowds going crazy. They're excited now. You convert the big first down. Everyone on the sideline is juiced. These O-line uh, for Old Dominion, they want to they make a statement tonight. They have not been great in pass protection throughout this season, but they want to play well tonight. Knight again, the carry, but Cut down in the backfield and a good open field tackle from Malik Gant, preseason Conference USA. They think he's the best safety in Conference USA at Marshall. 
Yeah, he really is. Just a great story, too. He's a walk-on. Coaches say he earns it every single day at practice. And he's he showed right there. He's an elite tackler. He really is. In space, wherever he may be, he gets guys on the ground. Strong gets the carry. Down close to the 10-yard line. And that'll bring up third down for this Old Dominion offense. On the season, it'll be 30% on third downs. It has not been a strong suit. You got two receivers that can go up and get it in Fulgham and Duhart. Fulgham to the near side, Duhart to the far. Both of them isolated. He's going to try to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. I assume Marshall's going to give him some help. I put it up to them. We go to Fogel, but it's tipped and intercepted. It's Malik Gant. Not only can he tackle, he can catch a lollipop. Let's see here. I believe it was number 91, Ryan B. Look at him. Get that big left paw on the thing. Best case scenario, you get the ball tipped. And your safety comes down with it. Malik Gant, very opportunistic player. And I, right there, Chris, they need to change the rule in college. You need to be down by contact. He should have been able to pop up and run. You got to get tackled. I don't like the rule in college. I feel like you treat them like little kids. And if their knee <laughs> touches, they're down, and nobody touches them down. Change that rule. I don't I'm know who I need you. to talk to. Chris. I'm with you. It feels like I'm watching a Pop Warner game when that happens. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that for these kids. Second force turnover of the game for Marshall. And it's a keeper from Thompson. Now, he's not going to blow you away with his speed, but they, they do say he can show more with the run than he did last week. Just keeping you honest there. You need to pull it once or twice throughout a game to, to keep them honest so they can't cheat uh, the rest of the night on you. But this Old Dominion defense, too, they feel much more comfortable as a whole when they're facing quarterbacks that aren't the true dual threat guys. And Thompson's definitely not a dual threat. He can run, but he doesn't want to. That one off the fingertips of Tyree Brady. And to bring up a third down, Old Dominion after the interception. Really would love to keep him pinned down here and keep field position in their favor and get another crack at it in Marshall territory. Third, third down of the game for Marshall. They are one of two so far in this game. Still no score. 2.20 to go in the first quarter here on Stadium and Facebook. Complete first down, it's Brady. And boy, does Thompson love going Brady's way. He is the leading receiver on this team, but he really hasn't looked in anyone else's direction so far in this game. Yeah, and right there, it's a, it's a no-brainer to go to Brady on the outside. Uh, this, this Old Dominion defense was obviously showing a lot of respect for Brady's speed, playing, giving him a good eight, 10-yard cushion there. Give him the ability to convert that. About those moves in the backfield to get three yards from Tyler King. Brady, by the way, five receptions. The team has six in this game. Obi Obialo has the other one for five yards. Yeah, Brady really sets the tone for this this whole team, this offense, I think. That work ethic, everything about it. When you have a, a stud receiver who's bringing it day in and day out on the practice field and on the game field, that, that really trickles down and the young guys see that and it really can elevate your whole team. Felt the pressure, he'll keep it himself, he'll get the corner, but there'll be a holding call. And that goes on the tight end, Xavier Gaines. Not gonna take very long to sort that one out, AJ. Yeah, Thompson's outside of the pocket, has his eyes down the field, he's trying to find an open man and Xavier Gaines just held on for two or three seconds too long. I mean, he was exposed out there in the open field. The ref is obviously going to call that. Holding day. number 11 of the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. And Gaines a converted quarterback. He was a four star recruit in high school. Had uh, offers from Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Auburn, you name it. Came here and they moved him to the tight end position. They think he can be a great one before all is said and done. Just a sophomore. Need to put more weight on him. They said he's at 220. They want him at about 240, and they think he'll get there when all is said and done. But that penalty really hurts this drive. 
Back up at the 16 yard line, second and 17. Screen pass caught by Marcel Williams, still on his feet. Out of the 35 yard line, it's a first down and a pickup of close to 20 yards. That's a great thing to have in your back pocket. When you get backed up by a penalty, throw that little tear screen to, to Marcel Williams. He can make multiple people miss, get in the outside, and try to flip this field position and keep this drive going. It's a keeper again, second time, and this time gets down with the slide just in the nick of time. Pickup of six on first down for Alex Thompson. Yeah, we've talked to multiple times how Thompson's not really a, a dual threat quarterback. He's trying to prove us wrong tonight, I guess, by keeping these option reads. Old Dominion's not really a... Uh, maybe they're going to have to start to think about him pulling the ball down and work him into the game plan. A scoreless quarter. Kind of been that way for Marshall this season. Been a great first quarter team. Starting to move it on offense. Well, those of you watching on Facebook got to take a little tour of this great old stadium built in the 30s. Going to be renovating this place. Big time renovation coming uh, in the offseason and starting really next month. Going to tear down the, the sideline stands on both ends and, and build a, a new $50 million plus stadium and still keep some of that same old charm as we get ready to go here. Start of the second quarter. Both teams have had their chances in the red zone. Neither team has scored, AJ. That's a bit surprising for sure. This, you didn't think this old Dominion offense would be held in check like they have. Uh-oh. Anderson broke through that first line of defense, and he was a runaway train into Old Dominion territory at the 45-yard line. He's had a lot more success and a lot more chances in this game than Tyler King. Came in with just 87 rushing yards on the season. And now a quick screen pass and it's dropped. I'm going to say it's a forward pass, so incomplete. Right off the hands of Tyree Brady. James Brickhouse was ready to go the other way with it if that was ruled a lateral. This ODU defense has to feel pretty good about where they're at. I know it's early, but at least holding up Marshall, not giving up any points in the first quarter for a defense that's given up 38 points, over 38 points a game so far this season. So maybe some of these little adjustments and different personnel changes they have made are, are starting to work out a little bit. All kinds of time for Thompson over the middle, and it's complete for the long-haired Willie Johnson. First time we've called his name. Sixth catch of the season, and credit to that offensive line for keeping the pocket clean. He had all day here, just bringing a four-man rush, and they just walled everybody down. Alex Thompson, he's able to step into the throw, too. He has no pressure up the middle. And quickly to Anderson, and Anderson is all the way in. 20 two yards and we have our first score of the game shows you how quick it happens Chris once you start clicking you convert the one explosive play throughout through the air with Thompson hurry up run some tempo get the ball to Anderson he makes a few people miss just very very impressive here Four carries, 41 yards for Anderson. Had a couple big ones on that drive. A look from high above at the extra point attempt. Ten plays, 88 yards, and it's 7-0, Marshall. Marshall offense here, two plays to get you in. The long pass, Thompson has all day to complete this to Willie Johnson. They run to the line, give this thing to Anthony Anderson. He high steps in. Marshall, 10 plays, 88 yards. Take it a 7 nothing lead, first score of the game a minute into this second quarter with Kristen Balboni and A.J. Hawk. I'm Chris Hassel. If you want uninterrupted commercial-free coverage, head on over to the 
Conference USA Live Facebook page. See how this Old Dominion offense responds, averaging close to 40 points per game over the last three weeks, including that 49-35 victory on this field against Virginia Tech. That was the last time they were on this field. But no offense yet. A couple turnovers, in fact. See if they can get a return from Isaiah Harper. Can't get it back to the 20-yard line as the Monarchs still search for their first win in Conference USA play. Check the flag here. This Old Dominion offense only 72 yards so far. Holding number 45 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So now they'll be inside their own 10-yard line at 1-5, the only win against Virginia Tech when they were 13th in the country, the biggest win in school history. Three of these losses by one score, and they're giving up 39 points per game. But they have played some really, really good offensive clubs, including last week in FAU. They've got a stretch now where the defense is, is going to be able to to put some solid games together, improve on those stats, and they hope the offense can score enough to get some wins. LaRussa going deep. Harper, the intended receiver, and it's incomplete. Fulgham was right in the same general area, AJ. Do you think that was some kind of a mix up in route running? Yeah, it's definitely possible. Yeah, you, you never want to have the ability for one defender to cover two, cover two guys. You saw that Fulgham broke his route off when he saw they were both running to the post there. So just a little bit of miscommunication for the Old Dominion offense. And goes Keyshawn Strong. Pushed out at the 15-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down, an important third down here. Marshall has the momentum in this game. The crowd is out of it. And it is another big crowd here at Foreman Field. And they want to see more from Blake LaRusso like they've seen the last three weeks when he took over for Stephen Williams Jr., the 18-year-old sophomore. They were splitting time the first three games. That wasn't working. And that's not going to work either. Try to run it on third and four against a stout rush defense and it's like Keon White was in the middle of things there with a Marshall defender and he says I'm not getting kicked out of another game he was kicked out last week for fighting at Florida Atlantic they're gonna have to punt it away a bit of a surprising call there on third and short running the ball for ODU that's just uh, it's not really like them They're especially going against a, a stout Marshall run run defense Bailey Kate to punt. High kick, it's a good one. Spiraling and fair catch at the 40-yard line by Marcel Williams. Marshall with good field position again, up 7-0 in the second quarter. Well, the kids are dancing. I don't think the adults are very happy, though, with what they're seeing on the field from Old Dominion with 12.30 to go here in the second quarter. It's seven nothing Marshall. Ooh, getting it. He's flossing. Is that what that is? Yeah, believe me. All the young kids do it, and the older ones. <laughs> it, I mean, it may. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just young kids now. The older people may have stopped flossing. I guess you can consider us some of those older people. Absolutely, Chris. I definitely identify as an older older gentleman now. First and 10, 40-yard line from Marshall, coming off a touchdown drive. Alex Thompson to put it in the air again, unless he tucks and runs, which he does. Pointed out to his tight end on who to block. Devin Miller helped him out a little bit, and we've got some extracurriculars here. Over on that Marshall sideline, that's Sean Carter getting into it with a running back, Tyler King. And Marshall, under Doc Holliday, 48-7 when scoring first, which is what they've done in this one. No flags for those 
You think Doc Extra knows that stat, Chris? I uh, doubt it. <laughs> I don't think not, he cares about it either. <laughs> not one lick. Thompson to throw again. Slant over the middle, and it's Tyree Brady almost slipped free. Alex Thompson has to feel good about how he has started out this game. And he just looks so calm and collected in the pocket, too. He's not pressing. They were Last week they said he tried to press a little bit too much. Tonight, that is not the case. King the carry. Carter shoves him back along with Jeremy Miser. Now, you're right on Thompson. He, he, he looks like the quarterback they thought they were getting when they recruited him. 9 of 14, 94 yards. Does have that interception. One heck of an interception by O'Shane Zimenez early in this game. Well, Thompson in his fifth year in college granted a sixth year of eligibility so he has this year and next year left that he's going deep again too much for Brady who already has six catches in this game he had him it was a tight window there between the, the defenders and the coverage but uh, just overthrew that a bit also for Brady that's a tough catch to make he could have easily been staring directly into that sun trying to catch the ball. Some injured monarchs getting the crowd into it. One of the pads on, but still wearing those jerseys and whooping it up. Third down and long. Hand off Anderson. High steps. Slips. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first down in what could be. A fourth down try here for Marshall. Especially considering that play call on third down. Maybe that's exactly what they wanted to do. Get a few and then make it manageable here on fourth down and four with 10.50 to go first half. Offense still out there on the field. Yeah, number six, Kane Miskell came up and was finally the Old Dominion defender to, to finally get Anderson down. Let's see what they do if they're going to try to bring a little bit of pressure here on fourth and short. Anderson, the running back with four wideouts. They'll throw it. They'll have the first down. Artie Henry with just his fourth catch of the season. He had an offer from Old Dominion. This just looks too easy, especially for Old Dominion fans and coaches. I'm sure they're thinking, it's fourth and four. We can't give, make it that easy on Alex Thompson here in only his second start. Anderson sidestep the first tackler, hops over another, and is out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. I think Anderson's feeling a little bit. He's got to, doing that little stutter hop step deal. He's over 50, 50 yards. A few times. Yeah, he had a, a big touchdown run as Thompson, the quarterback, checking out of the game. We're gonna see a little wildcat here, Chris. There's an injury to a Old Dominion Monarch, Sean Carter. Now the play clock starts rolling, and you're right, he's on the sideline, and we'll see who takes the snap. Tyler King is out there with Brendan Knox, who's also a running back. It's the tight end, Xavier Gaines. Runs a little read option, and Gaines out of bounds. I told you, he came here as a quarterback Highly touted recruit. I even asked coach about him last night when we talked with the Marshall coaches. Why did he convert to tight end? He said, well, he just, he's just a great athlete. He could be a much better tight end. They've got a quarterback package for him. Makes sense. If you're going to run a Wildcat, why not a big athletic body that also has the threat of throwing the ball? Marshall three of five on third downs so far. Thompson. Throws to the end zone. They'll have pass interference as Geronda Hall was all over Brady. No question that they're going to throw this flag. Geronda Hall was just kind of beat from the line of scrimmage here and just ended up. Pass interference on the defense, number 23. That'll be a spot foul, automatic first down. Check the bottom of your screen here. Look at Geronda Hall. He kind of stumbles trying to get his jam. So you see him grab that right hand. He tries to, to bring Brady to the ground. And hey, penalty's better than a touchdown. Right. And if you get beat, 
That's what you do. Yeah, it doesn't look great. You don't want it to happen, but if for some reason you get beat off the line of scrimmage, instead of giving up an explosive touchdown, you pull him down and give your defense a chance. Anderson trying to power his way through the middle of that line. He gives your defense a chance, like you said. And now it'll be second down and goal. No gain for Anderson. Readjusted here. And whistles blow. Therese Dickerson stepped in the hole and took on Anderson with a full head of steam there. And that was a stalemate and got him out of the ground. That was a very impressive red zone stop there. Some confusion on the field. Bobby Wilder, I, I believe, may have called the timeout. Might be a good one here. This is going to be a big stand for his defense. Love to get out of here, just giving up a field goal attempt. The defense has played better, but surprisingly, nothing from the offense. Just 80 total yards. That is, that's very, very impressive. You would think at this point, point in the game, only giving up seven points, that they'd be leading this thing, giving up 39 a game. Everything ranking outside the top one. I mean, look at that, Chris. 226 yards a game rushing and almost 300 a game passing. You always hear coaches say that the oldest cliche in the world, well, we need to stop the run, force them to pass, make a team one-dimensional. Every coach says that, but it's true. If you want a chance to win, that gives you a, a much better chance if you can make a team one-dimensional, and that's the big problem for ODU. They've put up a ton of points offensively, but teams have been having their way with this defense running and passing. Marshall's done a good job with both. Over 100 yards passing for Alex Thompson. And they're nearing 100 yards rushing as well. So on 86. Now, none of that matters if you keep out of the end zone. That's the thing. Points, the points given up is the number one stat that matters as a defense. They scored on their last drive, a 22-yard touchdown run from Anthony Anderson. Full house backfield. But they'll throw it. Brady makes the catch. <laughs> Tyree Brady, the transfer from Miami, preseason Conference USA, had two touchdown catches in the last matchup. Got this one right in his bread basket. He swallowed it. Another 10-play touchdown drive for Marshall. And the extra point good from Justin Rohrwasser. Watch this crack, this catch here. Tyree Brady, great coverage by JoJo Heaton. It doesn't matter. Brady's going up. He's going to snatch that. Strong hands bring it. Hey, that's the parking garage that I got to park in. I'm sorry AJ didn't get to, though. AJ parked about six miles away. Walked all the way through you know, campus. Chris, here. I heard Mike Tirico say one time, uh, one of the best play-by-play -play guys in the business. Obviously, I do color commentary, but he said, you know, I like to, I like to walk around the city when I get in somewhere and just get a feel for the, the energy and the atmosphere. And I got that today by taking the garage. That's about a mile, <laughs> mile and a half away. That you did. And getting lost. So, hey, the weather was beautiful. I did not, I did not mind it at all. It is a great day. The chilliest day since May here in Norfolk. It's been 70 plus every day the last five months, but not today. 66 degrees right now and, and getting cooler. And a returnable kick for Old Dominion. They're looking for a and another flag. Time, but the last time he returned it, they had a block in the back penalty. Bryant and Fordham next Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Stadium. You see the hashtag there that you can use to get involved. Fordham Rams hosting the Bulldogs, a game you can catch only on Stadium. 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices. Will Knight, the carry, he's got a burst of speed. The freshman still on his feet. 
forward progress. Looks like they're going to give him a first down. We saw him for the first time this season last week. Had five carries for 17 yards in his first game. Yeah, the run, young freshman here just run a little zone run downhill. Look at this. Stays on his feet at the end like an awkward bend backwards. Still churning. I, I, they like this guy. I mean, he's a he's young, but he is strong already. He does not look like the, the normal freshman. That pass is complete. Noah Ellison with just his second catch of the season. How do they get Fulgham and Duhart involved? They've been non-existent in this one. Duhart has a fumble. You got to find a way to just take some shots to them. You, you know that they're, they're going to double cover these guys a lot. But that's what they do. They catch those contested balls. So you just have to, to keep pushing the ball to them. And you trust that they will come down with the majority of them. There's a fumble on the exchange. Quarterback and running back apparently not on the same page there and now you're behind the sticks on third down. Let's see this between the quarterback running back exchange. Yeah. You work on that thousands and thousands of times so that doesn't happen during a game but little things like that when things start to go wrong they just uh, they seem to creep up on your team. Well, they already have a, a lost fumble and an interception. And now they're sacked. Blake LaRussa down in a heap. And some pushing and shoving afterwards. Is that Ryan B that got around the end? There's a few white shirts in there. B along with Ty Tyler collapsing. And it was Tyler, left defensive end. The right side of your screen, just the grab and throw by a great, great pass rush move. Thompson has, or LaRouche, I'd say, has no chance. Ty Tyler is there before, geez, before he can get to the top of his drop. And just uh, we showed that graphic how they're they're worst in FBS and converting third downs. And right there is a big reason they haven't been able to protect him consistently this year. One of five now. That one was blocked, but a whistle before the snap and a flag is down. Ball start number seven on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, this is as bad as Old Dominion has looked since those first three games of the season. Yeah, and right now it's uh, we're at a, a tipping point almost. You can feel frustration in the stands. You can feel frustration on the sidelines for ODU. And, and you can also at the same time, you see Marshall feeding off of that. Their sideline seems very excited, like they are ready to pounce. Already five penalties more than their season average. This punt hangs up, and it's going to be returned. Marcel Williams benefiting from a fake out. They had two punt returners back there, and I think it was Nick Matthews. As a flag comes out late, Matthews pretended like he was going to be the one returning it. And they send King to the sideline, Kennard King, the freshman from Albuquerque. We'll try to sort this thing out. Ball marked about the 36 yard line of Old Dominion. It's going to be on Old Dominion too after the play. Somebody uh, pushed and struck a, a Marshall player. So when it rains, it pours for Old Dominion. Chris. That will be the sixth penalty of the game. Unless it's all, all offsetting and they feel like someone on Marshall came back after this. But I, I've watched the ref throw his flag. Personal foul. On the receiving team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Well, they didn't give a number. That's Keon White getting a toss. Question to. number six, Kane Miskell. Bam. Absolutely the right call there. Now, Miskell may have done something first. Wait, but they they met, they said on the receiving team, they called it on Marshall. So the, the flag was not on Miskell. Well, it does back Marshall up into its own field position after that great return. So Miskell was not penalized for that. Interesting. Huh. If I was Marshall, I may have something to say about that. But hey, ODU will take it. And I think uh, Bobby Wilder's saying, hey, you're, you're involved in just about every scuffle there, Keon. Let's be careful. Let's yeah, I'm sorry, use I the head. The double numbers got me, Chris. Keon White, not Miskell. That ball popped out of there. 
Ooh, that was almost dangerous for Marshall. If it would have hung up another second or half second, Old Dominion could have tried to turn this game around. It feels like they're going to need something like that to turn things around. They need a big play. They're not getting it from the offense. Yeah, they're going to need another play like Zimena has made in the first quarter to tip the, uh, the interception up to himself. They need something to spark this team offensively, and it may take a big play on defense to, to set up field position for your offense to make a play. Both touchdowns coming on 10 play drives in this second quarter. Armani Levias, ninth catch of the season. Well covered, though, by Old Dominion. And another big third down, but they have not been successful getting off the field on third downs in this game against Marshall. Yeah, they talked about Old Dominion. They've had too many free runners down the field for easy completions, and that's definitely been the case tonight on third down, especially. It seems like they've had free runners and just had their pick of where they want to go with the ball. Third and eight coming up on five minutes to go in the half. Thompson steps up. He's going to get the first down. Great downfield blocking by Tyree Brady, the receiver. Thompson must have heard me say he's not a true dual threat quarterback. Watch him now in the open field, making people miss, converting the big third down. You know what? People say he looks like Aaron Rodgers, don't they? Well, that's what Aaron does on third down a lot to break the back of defenses. You played with him in Green Bay, won a Super Bowl. Better than just about anybody. Yeah, I, I used to watch it from the sidelines. I, I'd stand there, and we'd be in a big third down. Crowd's going crazy. He's looking, he's looking. He pulls it down, makes a few people miss, and Aaron just would cross uh, the first down marker, get the first down, <laughs> and the whole defense, their whole sideline would just throw their head back inside, just so frustrated. And you do that multiple times a game, and that's what Thompson did right there. He's the second leading rusher in this game. Four carries, 25 yards. King just tripped up. And another third down here. Getting close to field goal range here in the second quarter. It may not look like it, but that was Zimenez there that tripped him up. It may not look like the most spectacular play, but that's a heck of a football play right there. He was engaged with a block, tried to get off the block, was falling down, and still was able to trip King up and force a third down. Third and four. That one too high intended for Levias, and he had him, but a little too much on it. And we'll see if they go for it here. It would be close to a 50 yard field goal attempt. And the range is between 42 and 45. That's the limit that uh, Coach Doc Holliday said last night he would attempt a field goal from with Justin Rohrwasser. Eight of nine on fourth downs coming into this game. That's tied for first in the country. They're going for it again. One of one on fourth downs in this game. And a timeout call by Old Dominion. Those of you watching on stadium will step aside real quick and be back for a big fourth and four. 14-0 Marshall, they are faced with a fourth down and four with 3.33 to play here in Norfolk, Virginia. Monarchs' first home game since that monumental victory over Virginia Tech. And they could use a big, big stop to try to wrestle the momentum back from Marshall. This was a 0-0 game to start the second quarter. But Marshall has seized control with back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. Alex Thompson in his second start, 12 for 20, 113, a touchdown and interception, and he's been big with his legs as well. With A.J. Hawk, I'm Chris Hassel. Kristen Balboni is our sideline reporter. Empty backfield, five wide on fourth and four. Thompson looking right. Throws it short and bounces it. Big stop for the Monarchs. Watch the, the front four. They didn't bring pressure. They used their D-line. Look at the games they run to just confuse them. 52 right there. It is Dwan 
Ross, he's looping back around to hold contain. That's what you do. You want to drop seven and play him in coverage. If you can get some pressure with that front four, that's how you have success as a defense. And now they got to get something from Blake LaRusa. Just 50 yards passing and an interception in this game. A real costly one in the red zone. Hand it off. Keyshawn Strong. Now just over 20 yards rushing in this first half. Coming off a four touchdown game at Florida Atlantic. A lot of penalties hurting them. Putting them behind the sticks. Haven't heard much at all from Fulgham and Duhart. Very strong, makes one man miss. Out across the 40 yard line, a yard short of the first down. Good individual effort there. It's tough to bring down in the open field. He's had pretty conservative play calling tonight, which is uh, it's not usually the case for their offense. I, I would assume at some point they're going to have to open it up a little bit. Try to push the ball down the field a little more. A pump fake, and that one's incomplete. And it's fourth and one now. That's a bit surprising. With one yard to go, they put it in the air. They throw it to Cornell Hendrick, who doesn't even have a catch in his career. Freshman from Manson, North Carolina. They'll go for it in their own territory. It's a keeper, it's enough for the first down. I love this play call here by Old Dominion. Give yourself options. He could have handed it off, but no, he read the defensive end, he crashed down. So La Russa keeps that, but he also had receivers on the outside where you could throw a backwards kind of bubble screen pass uh, if they have someone Marshall. committed to the quarterback. So a lot of options there on that fourth and one. I, uh, I think that was a great play call. Now a timeout called by Marshall with 2.14 to play here in the first half. 14-0 Marshall and the Monarchs, well, they need La Russa to play like he has of late. Looking a lot like the first three games. You see the difference when La Russa was sharing time with Stephen Williams Jr. in the last three games. I mean, he's, he's averaging 378 passing yards a game. And, Right now, just 56. It's been a bit surprising, no question. Obviously, two turnovers for this Old Dominion offense doesn't help, but it just, uh, the lack of shots down the field is what has been surprising so far. Now, obviously, credit the Marshall defense. They're doing a good job of having a safety over top of Fulgham and Duhart the whole time, but they still usually take their shots. There's a screen pass to Isaiah Harper. You got to look at Stephen Williams, the 18-year-old sophomore quarterback on the sideline. They still are really high on him. Said he's, he's taken this really well. And they're hoping that they can redshirt him this season. He's already played in four games, so he takes another snap, snap and he won't get to redshirt. Let's check this flag. Personal foul, number 74 in the offense. 15-yard penalty, still first down. That's the left guard, Tony Barnett. Check out the bottom of your screen here, 74. Look at him peeling back. Let's see if he completes that. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but the receiver's out of bounds. The whistle. The foul occurred after the play. Yep. Therefore, it'll be second down. Yeah, just something unnecessary that you don't need to do. This game has been chippy from the start. It really has. And things like that just absolutely kill an offense, especially when they were finally getting some movement and, and moving the ball down the field, trying to get some points on the board before half. One of the most disciplined teams in the country coming in, just four penalties a game, but if they're not careful, they're gonna end up with double digit penalties in the first half. Will Knight has been one of the few bright spots when he's touched the ball on offense. Freshman running back. But thanks to that penalty, it's third and long. Clock moving, 145 to play in the first half. Dumps it off tonight. First down and more. And finally something working for Old Dominion. And it's the freshman, 
Will Knight out of Philadelphia. Barusa there, he went through all of his progressions. He didn't want to check the ball down and throw it to his back. He went through one, two, three progressions. Everybody's covered. Throw it to your back, convert to the first down, and keep this drive going. So that was a, a really, really good job there. Hopefully he's settling in now into this game and can get back to his, the, the way he has played these previous three games. And Harper gets out of bounds, so the clock stops. 1.24 to play. As they try to put some points on the board going into halftime. And they do get the ball first to start the second half. When are we going to hear from Duhart and Fulgham? Four catches combined in this game. That's a grab from Harper. Out of bounds. Inside the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at the 29. Third down in what could be four down territory here. Third and three. Screen pass. Good enough for the first down and a smart move to get out of bounds as well. That's Cornell Hendrick. First catch of his career. Hendrick doing a good job of, of recognizing what he needed to get the first down, but Travis Fulgham, big receiver on the outside. Held his block for three or four seconds there to give Hendricks the open lane. Strong the carry up the middle. Old Dominion with just one timeout left. Doesn't look like they're going to use it here. Clock will tick under a minute now. First half. Second time Old Dominion's had it in the red zone. First time they threw an interception. That was in the first quarter. Larusa to throw. End zone. Do Been that kind of day for Duhart, who already has a fumble in this game. Duhart with a little seven route to the corner. He has it, but man, credit Nazi Johnson getting his hand in there. Duhart just couldn't initially get a hold of it. He tries to separate enough, and his right hand was caught up enough with Johnson to where he never truly got both hands on that ball. Just that's very, very solid coverage. Screen pass, it's the freshman again, tackled inside the 15, but it's not enough for the first down, so the clock keeps moving. What do they do here on fourth down and short? Hendrick with his second catch, offense still on the field. Time running out here. They're gonna go for it. Knight is the running back. And Marshall calls timeout. Timeout, Marshall. 23 second. seconds left in the half. Seconds. It's fourth and two. And even if you get this first down, you still don't have much time to get it in the end zone. No, you don't, but you can take a few shots at the end zone like they did with Duhart earlier. You can take one or two shots at the end zone, and then you can kick a field goal if you want to, but you, you got to get the first down. That's the toughest thing. So you're okay with going for it on fourth and two and not taking the points? Yeah, I'm okay with it. I don't have an issue with it right here. I think they may send out the kicking unit now that they've had time to think about it after Marshall calls the timeout. I just think it's pretty risky to, to go for it. It's not fourth and inches, it's fourth and two. And you only have one timeout and not much time. That's true, but if, if you, you think of the risk reward, if they can find a way to put seven on the board, they get the ball to start the second half. They want to run in with that momentum and try to keep it moving. So, Well, they are going to kick the field goal. Yeah. I mean, points are points. But I would not have argued with them if they would have gone for it here. Nick Rice, 5 of 9 on the season, just 3 of 7 from 30-plus. And this one is right at 30 yards. From the left hash mark. Good kick. And Old Dominion's on the board. They take the points with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And maybe a little bit of momentum going into halftime. You don't want to miss the best college football show on Facebook, do you? Catch College Football Weekly Wednesdays at 7.30. Preview the biggest matchups, take a look at the top highlights of the week, and react to fans' questions and comments. You can catch College Football Weekly every Wednesday, 7.30, only on Facebook. You can take a look at the 
great tailgating scene here at Old Dominion University. Rods look good. 14 plays, 55 yards, first scoring drive of the game for Old Dominion. You got three, so you didn't come away empty-handed. You get the ball to start the second half if you're Old Dominion, so you, you want to take the positives uh, of what you did this first half. Their offense did start to move the ball a little bit on that drive, but this, this Marshall defense, I mean, they're stout in the run game, and they're showing it in the pass game as well tonight, and really uh, doing a good job of getting some pressure on La Russa, but also having very, very tight coverage in the back end. Short pop-up kick taken in at the 25-yard line. Look out. Oh, boy. Marcel Williams is their punt returner, and he nearly busted it loose with 14 seconds left. Taking a look at the Conference USA standings in the East. Marshall trying to get to two and one. Lone loss coming to Middle Tennessee last Friday. Old Dominion just trying to get one in the win column. 0 and three, a couple of early losses, and then returned to conference play last week at FAU. So they're 0 and three, the only 0 and three team in Conference USA. But Middle Tennessee is feeling really good because its two wins are against the two teams picked to be atop this conference. Marshall picked second in the division, and FAU picked first in the division. And let's see what Marshall tries to do to get points here with 14 seconds left in the half. Thompson down the middle, incomplete. Threw it behind the intended receiver, Willie Johnson. He was open. Yeah, he had Willie Johnson was was bending that in from the hash and yeah, from this running the seam route. And I guess Thompson thought he was going to break that out. And Johnson decided to bend that back to, towards the middle of the field. And they just weren't on the same page. I mean, that, that'll happen when you're, this is only his second career start here at Marshall for Thompson. So you can expect things like that to happen uh, throughout the night. 10 seconds left. One timeout for Marshall. They'll hand it off, and that should do it. See if they call the timeout here. They will not. So they are content with a 14 to three lead going into halftime. Well played half by Marshall. But Old Dominion does have a little bit of momentum with that field goal at the end of the half. AJ, this is not what I thought we were gonna see in this game. Uh, we, uh, we can make our predictions, talk about whatever we think. Well, you never really know once the, these two teams face off uh, turnover is obviously a huge key, and uh, let's see if La Russa on this Old Dominion offense can get going from uh, taking the ball to start the second half. And coming up at halftime, we'll take a much closer look at that historic win here on this field against Virginia Tech three weeks ago. We'll also break down the first half stats and show you some first half highlights. You see a couple of them right here. Anderson, 22-yard run to get things going. Brady, touchdown catch. Thundering herd up a, just about ready to go here in the second half. Old Dominion trailing Marshall 14 to three. And they will get the ball to start the second half. Will the Monarchs after kicking that field goal in the final 20 seconds, got a little bit of momentum, finally got on the board. Let's see if they try to go to their big wide receiver stars here in the opening drive of the second half. I mean, Jonathan Duhart, five straight 100-yard games. He's sitting on 10 receiving yards right now. Travis Fulgham with just one catch. He had 151 receiving yards last week against FAU. So they have weapons. Let's see if they try to get them involved here in the second half. Marshall to boot it away. And another returnable kick, Isaiah Harper. Finds a seam, ripped down across the 30-yard line. Good opening field position for Old Dominion. And look at these numbers. Stuhart fourth in the country in receiving yards a game, averaging close to 118 yards a game. Just 10 receiving yards in the first half. Really stunning. Yeah, only three receptions, and I can't remember more than maybe four or five possible targets in the first half. Uh, Sure, Marshall has been all over him, but I, I think at some point, if you're LaRusso, you have to put it up and give him a chance. Yeah, four targets, 10 yards. It's just uh, it's unheard of for a guy like Duhart. And only one single target to Fulgham, the other great receiver. 
There is a flag in the backfield. We saw six penalties in the first half for Old Dominion for 60 yards. Holding number 65 in the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. So already behind the sticks on this opening drive of the second half for Blake LaRussa. Over 100 yards in the first half, but no touchdowns and did throw a costly interception in the red zone when this game was still scoreless. Knight didn't have anywhere to go. That corner was shut off, and Marquise Couch cleans it up. Ryan B doing a lot of the dirty work there, and he, he missed the first couple of games. He was banged up, and they really, really like what he does, and they feel like he's really going to going to add another element to this defense now that he is healthy. We saw he tipped the interception that Marshall got earlier in the red zone, so already making an impact. LaRusso over the middle, and that pass is caught by Duhart. Longest completion of the game to Jonathan Duhart. That's a familiar sight for these Old Dominion fans. Duhart catching the ball with multiple defenders draped all over him. That's what he does best is go catch contested footballs because he very, very rarely will ever have one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's third down and long, and it'll be fourth and even longer. Swallowed up by Ryan B. and Marquise Couch. And B now in the top ten in school history in sacks. An ugly drive summary for Old Dominion. Fumble, punt, interception, punt, punt. The one good drive, a 14-play drive that ended up resulting in a field goal. They kind of ran out of time. It was fourth and two. They wanted to go for it in the red zone, but decided to kick the field goal. Punt is a good one, and it's a fair catch inside the 30-yard line from Nick Matthews. And Alex Thompson coming out in this second half. Uh, that coaching staff from Marshall was right. He looks a lot more confident this week than last. He really does. And, and they said they wanted to get some quick hitters early, and they definitely have that. And he's not young. He's just inexperienced as far as his football played here at Marshall in his second career start stepping in for the, the injured Isaiah Green. But I, I really do like his pocket presence, how he has control of the offense. He doesn't have any frantic energy. He seems like he is just in control of this game. Incomplete. And he said at the start of the broadcast, he's been compared to Aaron Rodgers because of the way they look. And when he doesn't shave, he looks just like Rodgers with the helmet on, doesn't he? He does a little bit, except for... I know these young pups wear these new age helmets there. Aaron isn't, hasn't moved over to that new age helmet yet. He's still rocking the, the single strap, uh, chin strap, if you see that. The old school from 1945, Aaron's still rocking that thing. I don't know how he doesn't break his jaw every game. Did shave this week. So he probably won't have to shave again for a month or so. Another design quarterback keeper. This time it does not work. Swarming defense for Old Dominion and Justin Noy stayed home and made the play. Here's Old Dominion's chance. You got him backed up third and 13. What do you do? There's a good chance they're going to drop into coverage. Put seven defenders back in some zone coverage. Keep their eyes on the quarterback so they can break on the ball. Maybe run some little slants and games up front with this front four. You can see them communicating right now. A lot of times you give the D-line some freedom to run what you think may work. Look at number seven, Zimenez, see if he's able to get some pressure. Third and 13, one running back. Three wide outs and a tight end. Quick pass, Williams on the screen, slowed up and swallowed. And that was a good play by Jordan Young to get in his way. And AJ, you were in Green Bay just a couple days ago. Yeah, I'm headed back Monday night for their Monday night game. Yeah, I'm doing a little feature on 100 years of the Packers and uh, got to speak with some of my former teammates. There's only a few of them left now, Chris. A <laughs> uh, bunch of young kids walking around. <laughs> Look at me like the old guy, but some of the guys I played with right there, obviously Aaron Rodgers, Clay Matthews, 
some other guys. It was Matthews fun. Matthews looks older than you with that uh, with, with that beard. Told me he feels old too. <laughs> Especially with all those uh, calls going against him. This call looks like it's going to go against Marshall here. Ball start. Number 21 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And get a false start and maybe the momentum starting to go to Old Dominion after that field goal to end the half. They get a stop on the first defensive possession in the second half and now they need to see something from the offense that just hasn't been able to move the ball for Bobby Wilder. That's Daryl Brown who didn't play last game. Back deep to receive. It's a short kick that's going to bounce. And Brown picks it up on a couple hops and runs out of bounds. I was surprised how far back he was on that punt return. They lost some field position there. But they'll have it down 11 with 11 minutes to go in the third. Those of you watching on Stadium, welcome back. O'Shane Zimenez just had a, uh, a nice feature on him on our commercial free coverage on Facebook. And he made a huge play early in this game. What an individual effort. Got the hand up deflected it to himself first interception of the season just doing it all by himself and Armani Revias the tight end his job is to try to chop him down get him out of that throwing lane but Zimenez was not having it plays off the cut gets his hand on it and has the athletic ability to also reel in the interception strong the handoff gets through taken down by Malik Gant or that might have been six Keyshawn Strong really broke out last week. And the run game is usually not a huge part of their offense, but they've had success kind of slashing through this defense tonight of Marshall. And Strong is absolutely running with authority tonight. He's, he looks like he's running a little bit angry. I, I like it. He wants more and more touches. This time, nothing doing on first down. Had three rushing touchdowns last week go along with a receiving touchdown a career high four for the game yeah his first 29 games had just two touchdowns total it's a career high and then some Larusa steps up and gets eaten up that pocket collapsed in a hurry Malik Thompson with his third sack of the season this makes it just so tough for Blake LaRussa. He's been sacked 17 times coming into tonight. And they just haven't been able to keep him upright. And he's played very, very well, taking a pounding throughout this season. And you just wonder how how much is enough. When when do you hit that wall where he's it's gonna have a negative impact on his play and he just gets so beat up. It's a handoff on third and long, and they don't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan B, a player that they lean on. According to defensive coordinator Adam Fuller, B was second team All Conference USA a season ago. Missed a couple games early in this season, but he has come back with a vengeance. Now healthy, and he's been all over the yeah, place in this one. He's such a unique body type for being an interior defensive lineman. Six foot seven, 280 pounds. You don't see a whole lot of six foot seven guys playing nose guard and three technique in there so that's what presents a lot of problems for the offensive lineman on on how to to block him and use his leverage Kate with a good high kick and a fair catch inside the 30 yard line by Nick Matthews Marshall's got it with an 11 point lead here in the second half 14-3 Marshall, uh, Old Dominion got a stop on the uh, opening drive of the second half, thought maybe they could put something together on defense, but boy, Coach Doc's D has been great in this game. There's the, uh, the friendly lion out there on the field. King of the jungle. They got a good thing going here at ODU. It's a, it's a fun campus, it's a fun atmosphere. Big Blue looks a little disappointed. Look at that walk wow. off the field real slow. He needs a coach in his ears. Like, Will you run off the field? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a coach tell me one time, <laughs> body language is your resume. <laughs> and I, we need to let him know that right now. Well, he did make it off in time for the snap. Barely. Anderson picks up a yard. 
Marshall's two touchdown drives came back to back in that second quarter. No scoring in the first, no scoring in the third. There he is, Big Blue. It's a pep in your step, Big Blue. Oh, you got right. You can't go wrong hugging the troops or the kids. Now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Second and nine. All kinds of time for Thompson. And a wide open receiver is Brady inside the 40 yard line. Tyree Brady is wide open here on this seven route again. Basically, just kind of a, he went vertical, didn't even hate. He was thrown to a seven route. And look at the one handed snag. Thompson even got rid of that ball late. He saw Brady open up late, still got rid of it in time and, and made that completion happen. Anderson first down at a punishing run close to the 25 yard line. I mean, I'm going to wake up with nightmares of me being in the back end playing safety and Anthony Anderson running my direction, running <laughs> downhill. Like, I do not want to take him on <laughs> in the open field. 240, beefcake. Picks his way for a few more inside the 25. That wears on you too, Chris, especially it wears on your defense when you know that he's just going to continue to keep coming all night. And a lot of times when you can, when you have runs like he does where he's finishing forward, he's he's trucking two or three players every single run. That feeds him. It gives them energy. And he's getting better as your body is slowly deteriorating mentally and physically. And this Old Dominion defense already without two of its best players, Miles Fox out for the season. Lawrence Gardner, their leading tackler, out for this game with a concussion. And for Marshall, they're, they're missing two key players on offense. Obviously, the quarterback, Isaiah Green and Keon Davis. And both of those players expected to be back maybe as early as next week for Marshall. But Alex Thompson doing a really good job here in this game. Three of eight on third down. And a big play here for this Old Dominion defense. They can't come up with the stop. First down, Anderson is now over 70 yards rushing, and he's averaging over six yards a carry. Yeah, it seems like a no-brainer to keep that one on the ground with the success that they've had with Anderson running the ball. Anderson again. Inside the five. But a flag. It looks like it's going to be an illegal substitution on somebody that came from the back judge in the end zone. Illegal substitution on the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first and goal. Bobby Wilder. Yeah, that penalty doesn't go in the stat book because it was declined, but yet another flag going on this Old Dominion team. That would have been the eighth penalty of the game. Doubled their average for the season coming in. First and goal at the four yard line. Half the field in the, the sun, half in the shade. And a timeout called by Marshall. Timeout. Marshall. And we'll keep it They're here first. on Stadium. 30 seconds. And you wonder what makes that happen to where a team all of a sudden just out of nowhere doubles, just double the amount of penalties that they normally have. I mean, we'd be rich men if we could <laughs> pinpoint exactly the reason for that. But a team like Old Dominion, coached by, by Bobby Wilder, that, that typically doesn't have games like this where they shoot themselves in the foot and just have multiple penalties for no reason, just unnecessary penalties, too. Some of them. Some of them have to do with being tired at times, it's like putting 12 guys in the field. Some of them are just completely unnecessary, hitting people late after the whistle, discipline issues that just, you don't typically see that out of these old Dominion teams. So I wonder what it is or all of a sudden they pop up and you have a game like this. Sure, it's been chippy throughout the night, but normally they've been able to keep their composure, not have these just, some of these mental errors and mental mistakes that 
you just don't want to have. It's tough to win when you do that, especially when you're one and five trying to find a way to get your second victory. All right, after the timeout, first and goal for Marshall. And it's an easy touchdown run for Anderson, his second of the game. Could have cruised one of those battleships through there that we see on the shores here in Norfolk. All those fans in Kelly Green, happy they made the trip here to watch this one. A great bounce back performance so far from Marshall after the loss Friday, eight days ago to Middle Tennessee. Extra point coming from Justin Rohrwasser. And he is a perfect three for three. Eight plays, 73 yards. The catch here from Brady that sets up the run from Anderson right here. Waltzes into the end zone. 21-3, Marshall. Marshall with another touchdown drive, third of the game. All three touchdown drives, eight plus plays. And this one may have broken the back of Old Dominion. Down 21-3 now, and the way this offense has looked, we're not sure how they're going to be able to muster three scores while keeping Marshall off the board. But still a lot of time to go. 531 here in the third quarter. This time Harper lets it bounce through and it'll come out to the 25 yard line. More football coming up in just a few weeks. This Marshall team will be on the road at Southern Miss, 3 o'clock Eastern time. And second game of the doubleheader, FAU against FIU. Shula Bowl down there in Miami. Lane Kiffin and Butch Davis, 7.30 Eastern time on stadium. I want to point out that the Marshall game exclusively on Facebook that Marshall at Southern Miss game the other can also be seen right here on stadium as well as Facebook over the middle and it's complete to the tight end Dante Anthony one of the biggest plays of the game for Old Dominion so far in this one I like it something we haven't seen the little pop pass to the tight end sneaking behind the linebackers there out running the safeties we have not seen that yet tonight. Maybe that'll give them the spark they need. Anthony only had 40 receiving yards all season before that one. LaRusse slings it, and Fulgham, second target of the game, second catch of the game. And it begs the question, why haven't we seen more of it? Fulgham here has a little bit of a cushion from the corner. And when you have a, the big body like Fulgham, even if the defender is there on his hip, he uses his body to box you out and make the reception. To Anthony again, second catch on this drive. Good play on first down. Why not? Throw it to the young freshman, big target in the red zone. Add another big body target for La Russa spread this ball out and see who comes down with it. it looks like a new offense out there on this drive on second down the give is to Will Knight big hole inside the 10 and down to the six yard line that's a beautiful thing when you have success passing especially when you sneak the tight end behind the linebackers you're going to create some space there for your run game to really open up. First and goal to Fulgham in the end zone, incomplete. Good coverage. Chris Jackson was right there, and looks like he actually had a better crack at it than Fulgham. Yeah, that was a scary moment for ODU. They've been moving the ball, and looked like you said a different offense this drive, and right there. Chris Jackson was all over it. A little bit of a double move there by Fulgham. Jackson was not fooled and almost got an interception. Second goal, Dominion trying to get back into this game. Hand off to Strong. Toward the goal line, marked at the one. I think you run to the line right now. Get, get set and go. 
They're not going to do it. Run the ball. They make a substitution. Strong comes out. Will Knight, the freshman, comes in. Shotgun formation on third and one. Third and goal for the one. LaRusse at a throw. It's caught. Fogum on the fade. And the Monarchs are in the end zone. And maybe, maybe they found something. Unbelievable, Chris. I mean, they proved me wrong. I was saying rush up to the line and try to run that ball again, but when you have guys like Fulgham and Duhart on the outside, especially now Dante Anthony at tight end, these big targets, why not give, put up, give them, a, give them a shot to bring the ball down? But, man, these guys have a tendency to make the tough throws and catches look easy. The extra point from Nick Rice is right down the middle. Seven plays, 75 yards, and on third and goal from the one, they go up top to Fogel. Look at this. Puts a lot of air under the ball. That's good in the NFL. Fogel gets two feet down. Look, a little stutter at the line, get a little separation. Jackson with good coverage, a little, little bit of a hold there, a little grabs the jersey. Without a doubt, touchdown for Fogel. Yeah, and Fulgham's got a really interesting story, guys. His mom works for the Pentagon. He grew up all around the world, was actually a soccer player and a basketball player. Coach Wilder said we had to recruit him away from basketball. He said, when I saw him play for the first time, he started as a walk-on. He said, oh, he's got to be he's got to be on scholarship right now. Hey, Chris, what's his mom do for the Pentagon? Or were they not allowed to tell you? <laughs> Just curious, asking for a friend. I, apparently, I she's not allowed to tell you. <laughs> She'll keep she works, sniper herself. Uh, no, I was trying to tell you. She works for USAID, and they've, they've lived all over the world. How cool is that, guys? Yeah. Awesome. Sounds like a good front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one saying that, Mrs. Fulgham. Just, just FYI. Me either. You're watching. Fourth straight game with a touchdown for Fulgham, who came here as a walk-on in 2014. Returnable kick. And the speedy Willie Johnson is taken down before the 25-yard line. Now it's up to this Old Dominion defense to get it back to the O. And it's up to Marshall and Alex Thompson to seize control once again. Now it's time to see what Alex Thompson really is. Now that, yeah, sure, you have an 11-point lead, but this ODU team is re-energized. The crowd is re-energized, and Marshall needs to answer to quiet this ODU crowd and the team. So we'll see how he responds. He'll throw it. It's caught. Boy, Tyree Brady has some hands, doesn't he? I would throw his direction every time. I mean, it's just... So impressive, very crisp route running, threatens the, the corner. Still good coverage there. He'll go and grab it though. King with a big run on first down. Pickup of eight, maybe nine yards. Had a career high 165 rushing yards last week, most by a Marshall running back in three seasons. They go right back to him, has the first down, midfield. I like how Marshall is mixing up their tempo. You saw after that completion to Tyree Brady, they kind of got to the line very quickly. They knew they wanted to, to find a way to convert that first, that second or third down and get another set of downs. And now they take the time again. Zimenez, backside, sack. Eight and a half. Sacks on the season came in second Chris, in the nation. Look at the left side of your screen here, number seven, Zimenez. Watch him. They single him up. He swipes the hands off the line, and there's nowhere for Thompson to go. It doesn't matter when you get around that. It's a hand swipe that, that people do. And the good thing is, uh, you don't need three or four or five moves to get to the quarterback. You need to master one move and then have a counter and a counter off of each of them. That's all you need to do. One good move and two counters. Zimnes, he has more than one good move. He can beat you a lot of different ways right there as the tackle shot his hands to try to get his hands on Zimenez. Zimenez 
He anticipated that. He swiped the hands down and then pulled him by. So he has no chance. Took all of the, uh, the blocking surface away from the tackle. And in just the seventh game of the season, he's tied the school record for sacks in a season. Third straight year, he's either tied or broken the record. Ties his own record that he set last season. Eight and a half sacks. Third down and long. Little shovel pass. Anderson won't get there. Good tackle by Justin Richardson. The freshman hasn't seen a lot of action, but he's in there because of the injuries to Miles Fox and Lawrence Gardner, and he knows what a big play that was. Marshall looked like they were thinking about going for it here on fourth and five from about the 44 yard line. Now it looks like they've decided to punt, but big, big defensive stand there by ODU. As we tick down toward 30 seconds left in this third quarter, Old Dominion scored on its last drive. A seven play, 75 yard touchdown drive. They'll get it back. Fair catch at the six yard line. Down by 11. Hey, Stadium's got a new fall lineup, and it, it certainly feels like fall on this day. About 60 degrees here in Norfolk. Starting the day at 10 Eastern with a show called The Territory, taking you through the biggest stories in sports across the country. Sauce and Shram is at noon, followed by our high school show called Emerge at 2 p.m. Campus Insiders is at 2.30, and we wrap up the day by setting you up for the night in sports with the rally, Game Time in America at 6. And Kristen Balboni contributes to most, if not all, of those shows. Every one of those shows, on I feel basis. like Kristen will pop in on. That's right. That's right. Loving it, too. Well, La Russa threw that one yard touchdown pass to Fulgham. Last drive, going deep down the seam, and he's got his tight end. Keon White. He had his other tight end, too, number 84, Dante Anthony, was also open. Running a, a little over route. I don't know what they did, but this old Dominion offense is looks like a completely different team right now. Third quarter clock hits triple zeros. And that's how we head to the fourth. It was 21-3 Marshall, and then something changed. Keon White, big catch to end the third. Back at SB Ballard Stadium, Foreman Field. Final season of existence for the old structure. Has a ton of character. They're going to be knocking down that end zone there, that sideline that you see there. Both sidelines will come down next month and build a brand new state-of-the-art facility inside. They're going to keep what they have in the end zones. Not going to do a lot with the end zones. They do have a great end zone facility. The best thing is going to be ready for kickoff next year. Larusa going to Fulgham, but throws it too high. And it's safety help coming over the top, and Malik Gant. Good coverage from Marshall. Second down and 10. And the numbers through three are evening up. Old Dominion starting to get things going on offense. But two turnovers and a bunch of penalties in this game. Seven penalties for 70 yards. And it's a bunch, relatively speaking, because they only average four penalties a game. Top 10 in the country coming in. LaRusa to throw again. Over the middle, incomplete. It went squirting through the hands of Keyshawn Strong, who's a 5'10 running back. A little short, and the hand's not quite as good as a wide receiver. Yeah, I think that one took him by surprise a, a bit. LaRusa got that out of his hand quickly, and you throw it a step early and high makes it a little difficult to catch. Third and 10. Over the middle, a little crossing pattern. It's a first down. Keon White has been huge on this drive. Two first down catches for the tight end. The Rusa here doing a good job of, of taking what the defense gives them. Marshall, they actually showed a two-shell safety. They dropped Nazee Johnson at the snap. He sprinted back into, he was a middle of the field safety. So it was really three deep, but they were in a, a soft zone coverage. You, you take what they give you underneath and then let your receiver do the work to get the first down. 
Harper comes in motion. They fake the jet sweep to him. Down the middle, caught again. Another first down, third 10 plus yard catch of the drive. This one from Keyshawn Strong. Look at LaRusso, the, the step up in the pocket to give the impression that you're going to try to step up away from the rush, and then you spin back out. You know who does that a lot? Aaron Rodgers. Hey, he is known go. to manipulate the pocket that way and really play with defenders' minds. Fake the handoff. Quick toss. It's caught. Harper. About 10 yards again. And they will move the sticks. Fourth first down of the drive. The drive that started at their own six yard line. Let's see if they try to get the ball to Duhart here. Looks like he's may have one on one coverage with carry on Merrill. He's way down here to the near side the wide side of the field hand off to Knight. Positive yardage on first down six. Second down and four. And this Old Dominion offense finally has that look that they had the last three games the win over Virginia Tech. The would be win at East Carolina. In five in the fourth quarter. 13 minutes to go, second and four. Rolling right and just throws it out of bounds. I told you at the top of the broadcast, they're yeah. without Jeremy Cox. And that one was right in the vicinity of uh, Kristen Balboni, our sideline reporter. Did you Gu get a hand on that? Guys, I did not even try to catch it. Everyone's making fun of me down here. Oh, hey. no. I moved out of the way and deflected it with my clipboard. Look, I'm about. It's a blue shirt. It was, it was pumping you up, too. I'm about self-preservation, guys. I know I can't catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. You know your limitations. I like it, Kristen. It's tough to catch a football when you've got a microphone and a bunch of notes. Some random guy taking a picture of you, too, I see. Incomplete. Duhart was there, had a little sliver. But LaRussa led him too far. And now it's fourth and four. A field goal makes this a one possession game, and that's what they're going to attempt here. Nick Rice is the kicker. He has a long of 48. Made from 30 earlier in this game. This one will be from 41 yards. Not easy, but not a ton of wind here to deal with. From 41 yards to make it a one possession game here in the fourth. Beautifully done. Ten straight points from Old Dominion after falling down 21 to three. They're right back in it here on stadium. Now, AJ, I know you know how to spot the, the new dance moves. What is that? It kind of resembles the old school sprinkler, but it's not. That's definitely not the sprinkler. That one, I don't know, Chris. I wish I did. But I do like the, what's the ice cream one called again? Ice cream and cake. I really enjoy that. I thought it was good. I, I get why it's a thing here. And it spans all ages. If you see, I saw little three-year-old kids up to maybe mid-60s taking part in that one. Old Dominion after the field goal is within eight. And this one goes through the end zone and will come out to the 25 yard line. Alex Thompson looking for his first win as the starting quarterback at Marshall. Got the start last week against Middle Tennessee. Did not play well. Lost at home on a Friday night. Today, the numbers look similar. He looks a lot better. And those numbers last week were inflated late in the game when it was somewhat out of reach. You're He's right. Those numbers don't tell confident. the true story of how he has played last week compared to to tonight. He's been much more in control, made better decisions, controlled this game, and he has his team up 21-13 with 12.40 to go. See how they respond here, though, after 10 straight points from Old Dominion. It's a keeper, and it's more nice yardage for Alex Thompson, who had 
nine registered carries last week for negative 33 yards. In college, they count the sack yards. <laughs> but he's done a, a really nice job he's, moving the football yeah, in this game on the ground. He's showing us that you have to honor him as a runner when they run that zone read option. Eight carries for 29 yards. That's not going to be enough for a first down, I don't think. Although, they are stopping the clock, and it looks like they will move the chain. So what do I know? King gets a yeah, yard, and it's a enough. Generous, generous spot there, I feel, for, uh, for Marshall. And he was hit right away, but all the ball needed to do was touch the tip of its nose to the 35-yard line, and it's a first down. So clock now under 12 minutes to go. Marshall has led the whole way. Jumped out to a 14-0 lead with two touchdowns in the second quarter. Old Dominion kicked a field goal at the end of the half. And that one was almost in the grasp of Therese Dickerson, the outside linebacker for Old Dominion. That, that was a tight, tight window that Thompson threw that through. Dickerson, man, he was inches away, it looked like, from a game-changing interception. Hand off, King. Tackled by Dickerson, who got a handle on his shoe, and will set up a third down. Third and a long two, under 11 minutes to play. Marshall led by as many as 18, 21 to three in the third quarter. They haven't lost on the road this season. 2-0 coming in, wins at Miami, Ohio and at Western Kentucky. But a big stop by that Monarch defense. And again, it's the freshman, Justin Richardson, coming out party in his first start here at Old Dominion. A little surprising that Marshall doesn't have big Anthony Anderson in to try to convert this. The nice jump cut there by Tyler King. But Richardson is not having it, playing great. Fundamentally sound discipline defense. Staying in your gap where you're supposed to be. You are the cutback player. And when the ball, can, ball carrier decides to cut it back, you are there and you can get him on the ground. Rugby style kick, and it's going to bounce and get a great martial roll close to the five and inside the five. Great punt, but Old Dominion's got it with a chance to tie it with a touchdown and a two-pointer. 9.45 to play. Well, as Marshall fans had a lot to cheer about, first three quarters of this game, they were up 21 to three, but Old Dominion, quick strike touchdown, field goal, defensive stop, they've got it. Only down eight, but they're backed up big time at their own five-yard line. LaRusa, quick toss out to Harper. And spins for one or two. Good coverage by Marshall. 9.30 to play in this game. A chilly day here in Norfolk. First home game for Old Dominion since that win over Virginia Tech three weeks ago. They've got four out of their last six games in this stadium. That pass deflected in the air and incomplete. AJ, you think they're targeting Jonathan Duhart enough in this game? I certainly don't. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's always a fine line. Like, when is too much? When is it too much to where you're trying to force it and you're taking unnecessary risk just to try to get him more targets, more catches? I think a guy of his caliber, you have to throw him and give him those 50-50 balls because he usually comes down with them. Only six targets, four catches for 19 yards. A guy averaging about 100 more yards a game than that. Incomplete. Harper had some running room, and it's three and out for Old Dominion. Yeah, right there. I mean, Larusa, if he could have held the ball for one more beat, Duhart was breaking his route to the middle of the field, to the goalpost. And he was definitely coming open, but 
LaRusse had already made his decision to, to get rid of the ball, and he just needed to hold it for one more beat and square his shoulders back up and try to pull the trigger. Those are the things you, you got to do to try to get Duhart going, and you just know he always creates matchup issues. Bailey Kate standing in the back of his own end zone. And at the 43-yard line is where Marshall will start. Isaiah Harper has nine targets in this game. Duhart combined with Fogum have just 11 targets in this game. And, and Duhart is one of the top receivers in the country. Yeah, he absolutely is. And he has all the physical tools, 100%. Sometimes a DB may think they're in good position. They may even think they're there for an interception, and Duhart will just steal it from them. Uh, so the fact that he hasn't been targeted that much tonight is just uh, its mind-blowing. It really is. King the handoff makes a move to the near side and gets the corner. Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Let's watch Tyler King coming right, right at us here. And you can see from this camera down below how tough it would be to get to Tyler King. I know the coaches love him. They say he's non-stop, high-energy guy, can't stand still. You can see that a little bit on that run. Offensive coordinator Tim Cramsey was telling us last night that he's got the ability to make a turn a five yard run into a 50 or 60 yard run. You saw that that quick move and all of a sudden he was out to the edge. And even a field goal here makes this a two score game. We'll see if they start to work some clock. It's moving with 830 to play. Go back to King ducks a tackle inside the 10 yard line. The market at the nine. Pick up a five on first down. It'll be under eight minutes to go in this game at next snap. Marshall trying to get it to two and one in conference play. King met still churning the legs and he is right near the first down marker at the four yard line. And I think they'll give it to him. ODU has to find a way. Hold a, a ball carry up, have two or three guys try to strip the ball out. If Marshall does get aggressive with the play coin and try to put the ball in the air, find a way to, to tip a ball at the line, get an interception, do something, turn this ball over and keep it a one score game. King out, Anderson in. Big Dog gets the carry, gets the corner, and gets the touchdown. It's a trio of touchdowns for Anthony Anderson. I'll tell you what. The duo of Anthony Anderson and Tyler King, two very, very different backs, but they complement each other very, very well. We haven't seen Anderson in probably two or three series. And you bring him in here to, to punch it in and make this a two-score game and suck the air out of this stadium. 14 carries, 91 yards, three touchdowns for Anthony Anderson. He had three touchdowns all season entering this game. He had just 87 rushing yards all season entering this game. Four plays, 43 yards. There is a flag down. Number 23 is defense. He is on the defense. Decline. Extra point stands. And time running out on Old Dominion. Marshall contingent, happy again. Looks like it could be the family of Donye Moody. Number 10 from Baltimore. And after the third touchdown run from Anthony Anderson, the lead is 15. 7.08 to play. And this one taken in at the 12-yard line by Isaiah Harper. 
Takes it out across the 30. Let me take a look at the updated standings in Conference USA. UAB with a shutout victory today. They get it to 3-0. North Texas with an easy blowout victory over Southern Miss. Uh, Southern Miss was 1-0 in conference play. And these are the scores. 42-0 over Rice for UAB. They get to 3-0 in conference. North Texas winning 30-7. That is a final as well. Charlotte going to get to 2-1 in conference play. That's a bit surprising. Looking on Facebook, Heiko says he loves the in-between features during the quote-unquote commercial breaks. Yeah, those of you watching on Facebook, you, you don't have to sit through the commercials. That pass could have gone for a touchdown if Harper could have brought that in. There are multiple flags on the field. Old Dominion's been penalized a ton already in this game. Seven for 70 Holy. yards. A number 10 of the defense on an eligible receiver. That's a 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Fifth penalty on Marshall. And there's Moody right after we showed his family. Don't show him again. <laughs> Not going to be as happy this time around. John on Facebook says, thanks for the broadcast. What a great picture, great coverage. We thank you for watching, John. Moody makes the tackle there on the first down pass, and they're into Marshall territory. This is still a game here, 6.20 to go, two-possession game. Got to get a score, and then you think about either an onside or, depending on how long it takes to get in the end zone, a quick stop on defense. Still all three timeouts for Old Dominion. Yeah, play calling is surprising there, calling a run right there. Down two scores with six minutes to go in this game. Personnel group changing from the, the Marshall defense as the referee stands over the ball and doesn't let him snap it. Bobby Wilder can't believe it. He thought that they should be able to snap that ball with all those substitutions taking place. Timeout. Marshall. They're second. 30 seconds. I'm with him, Chris. I'd be upset too. You can't give them all day. And yes, they do have to give him a chance to substitute on defense. Right, but you could give him a massive amount of time. You there. can just take yeah, yeah, delay a game. They take it down to zero and they're still substituting. You technically could try to do that. And it's up to the official at their discretion. And of course, when the offense makes a substitution, you have to give the defense a chance. But that doesn't mean you have to give them 15 more seconds. <laughs> As we look ahead, Marshall has a huge game coming up a week from today at FAU, 2.30 Eastern time. A matchup between the two favorites in the Conference USA Eastern Division. And then they're at Southern Miss, home against Charlotte and UTSA. Back shoulder to Duhart inside the 40, first down. Just the fifth catch of the game for Duhart. That's his longest reception. Five thirty to go. Larusa steps up over the middle, and that just lands at the feet of the linebacker Chase Hancock. Number six, Marquise Couch. There, Chris, really as a flag here. comes in late, really late. Couch may have got his hand on either Larusa's elbow or the ball there. He had a really nice dip and rip around the edge. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Number six, 15-yard penalty. Excuse me, that's a un yeah, unsportsmanlike 15-yard penalty. First down. Oh, Doc Holliday is hot at Marquis Couch, the redshirt junior from Miami. What happened? Did we see what happened after he made such a good play? He had such a great rush there. I didn't catch it, but apparently he did something. And now it's first and 10 from the 21 yard line with 527 to play. Both teams have been penalized 70 yards. Hand off to Strong. 
to the 15 yard line or close to it. Coming up on five to go. Full Dominion scores here in the next couple of plays, Chris. I don't think they have to go for the onside kick. You still have three timeouts left. You can make a stop, use your timeouts, and get the ball back. Strong has the touchdown. That was close. Well, you got to go for one here so you can make it a one score game. Think about it. If they go for two and they miss it, takes all the air out of the balloon. Nine points. That, uh, it, it goes against everything. So, yeah, you go for one, make it, keep it a one-score game. I don't think you have to panic right here and, and kick it onside. You still have three timeouts left with five minutes on the clock. 67 yards and seven plays and this extra point to make it a one-possession game again with 5.01 to go. And Old Dominion hanging around. See it, Kishon Strong catches it and splits the defenders. So it's an eight point game, 5.01 to go. And we'll see what Old Dominion cooks up here. With 5.01 and three timeouts, you would assume they kick it deep and try to make a stop. This kick into the end zone. Marshall will start it at the 25-yard line. If you haven't been watching on Facebook, this is what you've been missing. Rich sending this in. Go heard all the way from Hollywood, California. And that is, I imagine, his, his daughter with uh, R2-D2 wearing a herd jersey. <laughs> Fans everywhere of Marshall. I like it. A little creativity here. And if you haven't checked us out on Facebook yet, there are some of these uh, stadium broadcasts that we have for you that are also streaming live on Facebook, and those are commercial free. Which means you get a lot more of Kristen Balboni than you do on stadium. That might have been a high tackle. That flag came in and thrown right at King. That the arm got up around the helmet face mask area of King, and we'll see what they decide here. Looks like they got him around the neck. There's no flag on the field. Second down. Well, there was a flag on the field, but there's no penalty on the field, I guess. Yeah, so they pick it up. Mar <laughs> Marshall's looking to find a way to, to run this ball and grind the clock out. They make. ODU used their three timeouts. If they can get two first downs, they have a good chance of running this thing out. Lead for Marshall. They'll hand it off again. And King toward the 30 yard line. But it'll be third down and about six. All right. Old Dominion choosing not to use a timeout here. I mean, there really is plenty of time. 4 four twelve on the clock here. Third down, you will force a punt. You stop it. All three timeouts left. And what's left of this Monarch fan base making some noise, trying to get it back to the offense. Thompson throws, and it's complete. So close to an interception. Instead, it's a first down, Artie Henry. Just a gutsy, gutsy throw here from Thompson. Look at this, going here the whole time, just outside of the fingertips. I mean, that's the reason that's such a gutsy throw there by Thompson and a gutsy call by the Marshall offense. If you throw that a split second later or you don't get as much zip on it, that's a pick six. And this game has a chance of, of being tied if Old Dominion would get a two-point conversion. Justin Noy so, so close. There goes King. Splits the defenders and he's gone. 65 yards, he completes it with a somersault. 
And just like his offensive coordinator, Tim Cramsey said, he can make a five yard run, a 60 yard run. They'll get unsportsmanlike for the somersault, but the touchdown will stand if that's the only foul on the play. Yeah, if I'm Doc Holliday, I'm okay with uh, that unsportsmanlike. I'm sure he'll he'll tell King he doesn't ever want that penalty, but how could you not be excited? You have the athletic ability to be able to do a full go flip into the end zone after that run. On the scoring team, number three. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown. 65 yard run for Tyler King after Marshall converted on third down to keep the drive alive. The lead is back to 15. He should have been taken down for about a five yard loss, AJ. I know, watch Tyler King coming right into our wheelhouse here. And we thought he was stopped many, many times. And you said it, Chris, he could take a five yarder into a 70 yarder and this one will be the game winner. I don't even blame him for flipping into the end zone. Look at the, the old Dominion defenders here. I mean, that's the problem. When you can get guys to overrun like that, you're absolutely gone. I like it. I'm okay with this, Chris. Why is that? I mean, come on. Exactly. The kid's excited. He's not taunting. He's not taunting the other team. He's not rubbing it in. He's not looking back and pointing at an old, old Dominion defender. He's obviously very, very excited for what he just did for his team and his university. And he wants to flip into the end zone. Well, I, I, you saw the ref instantly grab his flag. Like he was excited to throw that thing. The worst part of that rule is if they determine that he starts doing that before he crosses the goal line, they'll actually bring that back to the 15 and take the touchdown off the board. That's I've seen that happen travesty. in games. But That's un-American, Chris. He had already crossed the goal that line. Take touchdown away from a kid. So you're saying, yeah, <laughs> if you turn around and start pointing at the guy yep. or doing sort of maybe high-stepping from the 20-yard line in, they'll, they'll bring it back. Yes, they will. Now let's see if Old Dominion can respond quickly. Harper out at the 36-yard line. So the penalty doesn't hurt them that much. Having to kick off from their own 20-yard line. Three minutes to go. Still all three timeouts for Old Dominion. But now they're definitely going to need an onside kick and a lot of help. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, they're not out of it. They can find a way to have a quick strike, score quickly. Obviously, you got to get the onside, but then you're you're right back in it in a one score with three timeouts to go. That's what keeps this thing alive. Russo looking for Duhart. Just five catches for 31 yards for Jonathan Duhart. Maybe you wonder, you know, with this kind of game, is, is he banged up a little bit? I don't, honestly, I would, I put it on the, the coverage for Marshall has been outstanding. Chris Jackson on that play was all over Duhart, and he had help over the top from a safety, but I, I would just credit the, the Marshall defense for trying to jam him up at the line, take the option away, and also Time get out. some pressure. Old Dominion, 30 seconds. On the Rusa to where they can't let these late developing routes down the field even happen because they're getting four-man pressure on the Rusa. Well, a lot happening in the college football landscape right now with uh, LSU taking a 26 to nine lead on Georgia, the number two team in the country. Washington and Oregon are tied. Penn State's only up three on Michigan State. Texas only up six on Baylor in the fourth. UCF has taken the lead against Memphis. They were trailing all game. That's what makes it so fun to watch, Chris. There's no guarantees. There's too many moving parts in the game of football. You never truly know who's going to show up. Screen pass to Harper. Well, they've run that play at least six or seven times in this game. That gets him a first down, yes. moves the chains. It seems conservative to call that, but they, they needed a first down there, obviously. You don't want to be put up in a fourth down to where it's definitely over if you don't get it, so get a fresh set of downs. 
was looking for Duhart. Did Duhart ever see that ball? I don't think he did. I think Duhart may have lost the ball with Chris Jackson, the defender, in front of him. I don't think he ever saw that. <laughs> it was almost like he thought Jackson was going to pick it and he was going to go tackle him. He definitely wasn't looking at the ball. And who would have thought that Isaiah Harper would be the leading receiver on this team? 11 targets, 8 catches. Duhart is 5 catches for 31 yards. Marusa just has to spike that into the ground in the vicinity of his running back, Will Knight, because Ryan B. and Channing Hames were ready to meet at the quarterback. Third and ten. I mean, Marshall's in the, I mean, I wouldn't call it a prevent defense, but. They only have three down linemen rushing three, dropping eight. The ultimate soft zone coverage here. Duhart was the intended receiver. Chris Jackson has been all over him in this one. Conference USA honorable mention a season ago. A junior from Tallahassee. Another pass breakup. Led the team with three coming into this game. Tell you what, Chris Jackson down, keeps playing like this. He's going to be a lot more than just honorable mention on Conference USA. Fourth and ten. Down the seam. Fulgham can't grab it. And it's a turnover on downs. It's a high five from Malik Gant. Fulgham, just three catches. And Old Dominion has to hit the road again at Western Kentucky next Saturday. Then they come home for three straight. It's Middle Tennessee, North Texas, and VMI. And for Marshall, it's going to be another road victory to get him to 3-0 away from home. And a road victory where they're not nearly 100%. They've got Isaiah Green and Keon Davis, starting quarterback and starting running back on the shelf. And Keon Davis is a game changer in the return game as well. Old Dominion using one of its last two timeouts. Timeout, Old Dominion, 30 seconds. Yeah, it's not a it's not a lack of talent for Old Dominion. When you look at their record, they, they have talent on this team. Obviously, defensively, that it's been a big issue. They haven't been able to get off the field on third down, and they also haven't been holding people in under 40 points a game. It seems like so it's, it's just tough to consistently win games. They've been in a lot of these games at the end, and just hasn't really uh, they haven't been able to put it together week in and week out. Georgia looks like it's going to go down in Death Valley to LSU. What a season LSU is having. They had the hiccup last week, but certainly still right in the running for the college football playoff. Notre Dame surviving against Pittsburgh. You think Missouri gives Alabama a scare, Chris? I do not. I am with you. Another timeout call by Old Dominion. This Marshall team only going to get 11 out, games most Old likely Dominion, this season because they had a their last. game at South Carolina canceled. And was talking with the head coach, Marshall, Doc Holliday, asking, is there any chance we will see an added game to fill that slot to get to 12? Because a lot of teams need that 12th game to get to bowl eligibility. I, I don't think Marshall will. But uh, he said that he doesn't think there's going to be anything during their bye week, and he's happy about that because he did not want his players having to play 12 straight weeks. He really wants the bye week, which they'll have uh, in two weeks. Yeah, and he feels pretty confident in his team that they can become bowl eligible without that extra game. Looking out for his players as well. Doesn't want them playing that many games in a row. You have to respect that. 
Third and nine. King breaks it loose again. And he just trots into the end zone for his second touchdown in the fourth quarter. And now it is a career game for King. 195 rushing yards and two touchdowns. And this tandem, King and Anderson, are up near 300 yards combined, five rushing touchdowns combined. King is special, I tell you what. Yeah, and this Old Dominion defense has to be so tired by Isn't now. it a lot like we saw last week at FAU? I mean, did these late, late, long touchdown runs. Yeah, and you see it right there with, with guys chasing from behind. They look like they just absolutely gassed. Justin Richardson there, there was, he was, in, he was there. He, he was trying, he was in position to make that tackle, but he just gassed. They don't have depth. They were just hoping that they don't have any more injuries tonight. That's the tough thing, and a lot of times that's what separates teams. Teams that have consistent success. They have depth at every position, and they can sustain some big injuries. They can have a guy miss a couple games, and they're not going to uh, have to put someone in with no experience to cause some issues. ODU just, they don't they don't have a whole lot of guys there to, to put in, and they've had to, to use a lot of people this year. At some point it catches up to you, and tonight it has. The last two weeks for Tyler King, 360 rushing yards. Last week he had a buck 65. That was the most by a Marshall running back in three years. And he's got 195. Most of it in this fourth quarter. One thing Marshall does not struggle with, they have plenty of talented running backs that all kind of bring a different thing to the table as well in what kind of skill set and body type they have. Credit to the offensive line, too, for Marshall. Marshall, 32nd. You They're saw last. that last drive, Chris. You see linemen downfield getting blocks at the second, third level, still fighting for their guy. They know that King has 195 yards rushing. Guess what? I promise you they want to get the ball back and get him 200. <laughs> Sounds like he'd be running it up or whatever, but no, they, they want that. They want to block for a 200-yard rush. What are they at total with Anderson and King? Well, and you got to add Thompson in there, oh, too. Yeah. He has 29 rushing yards. Xavier Gaines, remember, he came in, ran the Wildcat. The tight end had a four-yard run. 319 rushing yards yeah. for Marshall. And that's about three times their average. That makes it a, uh, a fun trip home for Marshall, especially this offensive line. And their defense has played really, really well. They've contained these, the big physical receivers and down the field threats that, that Old Dominion has. Just an all around good performance from this Marshall team. So Old Dominion with 147 to go. Has it out near the 40 yard line. Well, that's that's an up man's dream come true there. James Fagan, the tight end, getting a chance to hold the football. Hey, that's a shot, right? That might be right outside my hotel. I'm staying right down there, you're downtown staying. Norfolk. It's not my hotel, Chris. I don't know where you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> About a half mile from the water. I didn't know there was water here, how far I'm staying away. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 45 of the kicking team. That's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That's a wide receiver, Stone Scarell. And uh, it's going to give Doc Holliday a chance to do some chomping here toward the end of this game. <laughs> That was the defensive end, Marquise Couch, that he was talking to there. Old Dominion, again, this is a second straight game. Old Dominion's been within a score in the fourth quarter and gotten blown out. And I think a lot of that does have to do, as you talked about, A.J., with the defense and the injuries. Miles Fox, defensive tackle, had season-ending surgery. He's going to apply for a medical redshirt 
And Lawrence Gardner news that was just released today that he was going to miss this game. Their leading tackler due to a concussion. Kristen will have a post game interview with the Marshall Thundering Herd when this one is over. La Russa escapes and then spikes it in front of Isaiah Harper. 102 to play. Both teams are still playing hard, and I tell you what, Doc Holliday coaches these guys hard. He's not, we, he de we de have not seen him crack a smile on the sideline. He's still getting after guys when he feels like they have made a mistake. I think they could win the conference championship and he wouldn't smile. Maybe sometime back home in the privacy of his own bedroom or something, <laughs> maybe crack a smile and someone say, okay. But then he instantly is sending another text, another phone call out to the recruits to try to bring him to, to campus. Will Knight on the reception inside the 20. We were uh, speaking with him last night at the team hotel. And Kristen tried to get him to get, give us a comment on, on how his quarterback, Alex, Alex Thompson, looks a lot like Aaron Rodgers in the face. And he had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Did not care. No, 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 no. no. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if you said, who, who's that? <laughs> who's Aaron Rodgers? I focus on Marshall and whoever our opponent is. <laughs> Some coaches are so dialed in. I mean, you hear the stories that, what, Nick Saban, the only TV he watches is the Weather Channel? No. I've heard that. Who knows if that's true? I, I doubt it is, but they do get laser focused, and it's a never-ending job. Yeah, college coaches, they're a different breed. They really are. That's. Uh... Oh, yeah. You hear stories that... Coaches winning the national championship and calling recruits from the locker room after they've accepted the trophy. Makes you wonder how they can all stay married so long. <laughs> La Russa into the end zone too high for Duhart. 19 seconds left. But what a guy uh, Bobby Wilder is. We've had uh, Old Dominion back to back weeks in his 10th season here. Started this program. They, they got him here to start the program and they were in FCS the first few years made the playoffs and uh, he's just been nothing but kind generous with his time all smiles just first, even in a first class guy yeah, they're tell. one in five and he's still giving us the time they're still fighting Will Knight down inside the 10 12 seconds left Holden's still fighting Holden getting a big block on the sidelines is caught, but it's not a reception. He didn't get a foot down. Intended for Jonathan Duhart. And that'll do it. 42-20, Marshall with its best offensive performance of the season. And they respond after the home loss to Middle Tennessee to get to two and one in conference play. Charlotte joins them with a victory of their own today. And now teams will start rooting against Middle Tennessee. Teams like Marshall, like Florida Atlantic, that need Middle Tennessee to lose a couple games to win on this side of Conference USA. But this was a great team performance from Marshall, defensively and offensively, for Doc Holliday. A lot of respect between these two coaches, you can tell. And you could tell reading the uh, transcripts from the press conferences earlier in the week, both coaches mentioning one another and how much respect they have for one another. Marshall's going to make the trek back to West Virginia with a victory. 450 miles separate these two schools. Doc Holliday not quite on the uh, flight back to Huntington, West Virginia. He's speaking with our Kristen Balboni right now. Coach, you said you told the team that you wanted them to bring their toughness on the road. They certainly did that. You are undefeated on the road. What was the key here tonight? Well, we came in and played uh, extremely hard. I thought defensively we did an excellent job, but I got a little different coverage for those two guys. We were concerned about those two receivers. I thought our defense did a good job matching up against those guys and didn't give them a whole lot of big plays. And 
you know, just, we got we got to clean up a lot of things. We got a chance to have a solid football team. We got to clean up some things. I got to ask you, Anthony Anderson, three rushing touchdowns. Tyler King, two. He's right here. What can you say about this guy and his night tonight? Well, he number one, he's a tremendous young man. He's already he's already graduated, and we we're really proud of him. And he had a tremendous night along with our other running backs. So we just got to focus on getting better as a football team. We got great challenges ahead. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Hey, I got to talk to this guy right here, our player of the game, Anthony Anderson. Three touchdowns for you. What clicked for you tonight? Uh, just trusting into the game plan, uh, being prepared, like Coach always says, and just letting my O-line do the work and just letting us go out there and have fun, not thinking about it, just staying true to our game plan. That's it. I got to ask you about your counterpart, Tyler King. We've heard he is high, high, high energy. We saw him do that flip into the end zone. Tell me about him and his night. Man, Tyler's just electric, man. Since he first got on campus, man, you guys seen what he could do from last year into this year, man. He's a special player. We just got to keep him going and keep him healthy and we're going to keep it rolling with our run game. That's it. All right, congrats to you and your team. Go enjoy that win. Guys, back to you. Kristen, thank you. Five rushing touchdowns combined, 319 yards on the ground for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And they get out of here with a victory. 3-0 and on the road. Beating Old Dominion. And we appreciate everyone joining us on Stadium and on Facebook for A.J. Hawk and Kristen Balboni and our entire crew. I'm Chris Hassel saying so long from Norfolk. A.J. is going to start the walk to his car. Should be there by tomorrow morning. Good luck, A.J., and good luck the rest of the season to these two programs.